Good morning, good afternoon. My name is Eroter Gorpi. I'm the CEO and founder of Continue. And as you can see, I am also a sailor. Love to be, whether it's a Finnish archipelago or San Francisco Bay. Today is Finland's Independence Day, so it's a fitting to have a Finnish flag on the background. But today we actually are going to talk about MySQL disaster recovery solutions. So let's get started. Put the screen share on. And presentation. Here we go. MySQL disaster recovery done right. That's the subject matter today. You may know <clears throat> that continuum is about the MySQL availability. That's what we've been doing past almost 20 years since 2001. That has been our sole focus, MySQL availability and continuous operation for the, the business critical MySQL applications. Continuous operation challenge is um, multi-pronged. Uh, obviously it starts on the 24 seven availability, but if you really want to have a continuous operation, you can rely on the, the single site it can fail, even the cloud regions fail, as most recently AWS came down quite spectacularly. You need to have a secondary region, secondary site on the premises, wherever you want to uh, deploy it, but uh, in order to have a truly continuous operation. Obviously, <clears throat> performance is always an issue, and especially it's an issue with that they're geographically distributed uh, applications when the replication links are somewhat uh, sporadic intermittently failing and then cost cost is always a concern and especially when thinking about the open source based solutions we have to create a mod model that the total cost of ownership remains achievable even for the smaller companies there's plenty of mysql high availability solution on the marketplace obviously tungsten cluster is one of the, the leading contenders on that front it's cloud vendor AWS, Google, Azure have their own data service. It's a various degree of availability to attach to them. Some of the more popular uh, availability deployments are based on synchronous replication solutions. Something that Continue is quite familiar with because we had our own start 2004 around the synchronous replication solution until we 2009 changed our direction. And then Oracle obviously has its own solution. MHA is an alternative solution. There's a lot to it yourself, taking existing open source component and patching things together. And with the knowledgeable team, higher degree availability can be achieved, but then it's something that you have to keep developing and testing continuously as the environment changes. When we start looking for the DR solution, there are far, few in between solutions that actually can effectively provide you a, a solution. None of the cloud vendors really have a good solution for the disaster recover. Amazon actually have a decent similar, but it lacks fail back functionality, which makes it kind of challenging to reestablish the, the, the starting situation. Obviously, synchronous replication solution is not fit for the geographically distributed uh, traffic loads, what the DR requires. You can patch things again, but then this is the, the, a, a multiple degree more challenging to achieve doing by yourself. We believe that the MySQL available done right start from the, the, a three node cluster. You can have a two node cluster for availability, but losing one creates a single point of failure possibility. Uh, with the two nodes is not advisable. You can have a five if you have a more re-traffic, you can have a bigger clusters, but just from the availability point of view, three nodes is adequate and quite optimal to be honest from the cost consideration point of view. And each of these cl clusters have three key components. There's a connectivity layer or proxy that basically access traffic copy between application and underlying data service. There has to be a orchestrator, a software that manages the cluster and changes the, the roles of the clusters as needed. We call our 
man uh, orchestrator as a tungsten manager. And then alt underlying <clears throat> replication has to have a specific feature functionality in order to provide the, the high level uh, functionality for availability. And then when you combine these three node clusters together and have a, a chair graphic distribution, and when you have a manager and connectivity layer that are not only locally aware, they are globally aware, then you can truly create a uh, functional disaster recovery solution for continuous MySQL operation. Number of uh, software as a service, e-commerce, gaming, financial services, telecommunication, and also enterprise customers are actively deploying this type of solution. Some have a two sites. We have a customers with three, four, five sites, depending on the kind of a requirements and needs for the application. But for the disaster recover, you need to at least have a two sites in order to have a coverage. This is the view <clears throat> how you manage tungsten clusters. In this particular uh, case, we have uh, three clusters. Two of them are cluster of clusters or composite clusters, as we like to call. So we have a one three node cluster, we have a one active passive cluster, and then we have another one active active cluster. Today we are focusing on active passive cluster and how it behaves in a disaster scenario. There will be another webinar discussing about the active active use case as well. And I will walk through quickly the demo. There will be a live demo that I'm going showing that what's going to happen. As a starting point, database 13 is the primary database sitting somewhere in Europe. It has two replicas uh, locally in Europe. And then there's a relay site, a passive site uh, in the US. And this is basically actively taking all updates from the database 13 and then applying database 16 and then replicating in the 17 and 18. So this is basically any update traffic goes to database 13, any read traffic based on where the read is coming, either goes to the, uh, Europe or US. So all of them are actively servicing customers, either the update point of view or, or from the read point of view. If there's a failure, let's say this in this case, instead of a site level failure, we have a local failure, database 13 is out of commission. <clears throat> we initiate the automatic failover, promote the database 15 in this case, which was that the replica closes the database 13 as a new primary. This happens automatically without the human intervention. But not only that, uh, while we uh, promote database 15 as a new primary, we also need to reestablish the, the replication links be between the remote site in the US. So now, instead of feed coming to database 16 from database 13, it is going to come from database 15 from here on out and then replicate it locally. And then when we are considering uh, operation, this will require human intervention. We do not want to trigger a failover between sites automatically. We could do that, but that's not advisable because we wouldn't know what was root cause of the <clears throat> error and is there a real need for the, the site level. But it, obviously it's not healthy to leave us to two node cluster up and running in Europe as a, a primary site. So in this case, we decided to execute a automated failover using a switch command. And in this, as you can see, database 16 is now the new primary for the whole cluster. And, <clears throat> and, and then database 15, that was the uh, primary for a while, uh, was demoted as a relay primary and servicing replication traffic locally in Europe. And moving on, <clears throat> starting from the kind of a recover process, when we have established that the key reasons why database 13 failed, we may decide that it's healthy enough to be brought back online. We execute the basically recover command on the database 13 and it becomes a, a member as a rep, replica member of the, the relay cluster. The primary is still in US in this case and database 16 is uh, servicing all the update traffic and then local nodes are servicing the read traffic. And then in order to <clears throat> clean up the process, we may want to promote database 13 as a local relay primary first. 
And then we do a site level automated fail back back so that we are back in the, the original situation when Europe is the primary cluster, database 13 is the primary member of the cluster, and US <clears throat> is the secondary site with the database 16 as a, as a relay primary. Let's look at this uh, on a real life scenario. So I have a live clusters here up and running. We can see all these clusters here. I can filter just to kind of look the European cluster that we were discussing about. And let's create a failure by, in this case, just stopping the MySQL service on database 13. And let's come here, put the refresh on. We can see the database 13 fail. Database 15 is being promoted as a new primary. And then we are automatically also reestablishing the replication links between two sites between US and Europe. And so now database 16 is getting all the feed during all these events, when the database primary fails, uh, the tungsten manager and tungsten connector are actively working together. The tungsten manager realizes that sees that the failure taking place sends the notification to the uh, connector. Connector holds the traffic, and and then when the, the cluster has been reconfigured uh, and it packs up available to service the customers, tungsten connector releases and puts the, basically in this case all the update traffic to database 15. But uh, as indicated, it's not healthy to keep uh, the situation uh, with the SAS2 node as a primary site available. So let's do the switch command between the two sites. This is a automatic process. Once again, tungsten manager and tungsten proxy kicks in an action. Tungsten manager sends a notification to connector, hold the traffic. Uh, it starts basically reorchestrating the, the roles within a cluster, promoting database 16 as a new primary, and connecting the local replicas to the new primary, and then reestablishing the replication links between the sites, and then send the notification to tungsten connector that everything is up and running. We can start update and read traffic again. In this case, automatically all the update traffic actually goes to US. Uh, and, and then we have a re-traffic going out locally in US or locally in Europe. All of this is automated. All this while the application is continuously available. There's a slight delay in the process, but all in all, it's a pretty remarkably complex operation done simple, fast, effective fashion. Starting the backing from this process, obviously, this is a fully functional cluster. There's no real worries besides the fact that the one database is still out of commission. Let's see if we can recover database 13 as a member of the relay cluster at this point. And so the, we looked at database 13, concluding what it fixed whatever was an issue. And then by providing a recover command, this effectively starts the MySQL database again applies all the transactions that have taken place during the uh, uh, downtime period for the database 13. And then when it has completed, it will be introduced back as a replica of this uh, relay uh, cluster. And all along <clears throat> while we are doing this orchestration, once again, applications are getting active, updated and free traffic. Voila. Now we are back in close to the original situation. The primary is in the US, secondary side is in Europe, but we have a six active nodes available servicing the traffic. Let's promote or switch to database 13 now as a relay primary uh, so that we are one step closer with our starting point. And once again, Pretty complex operation is taking place. In this case, that uh, we, we are actively promoting the, the database 13 as a new relay primary. The database 14 and 15 are connected locally to this database 13. And, and then, as you can see, database 13 is now reading the update traffic from database 16. 
uh, and off they go again. And then to finalize this step, uh, the fail back operation, once again, we can do another site level switch command. All of these are relatively complex processes, but you can do that automated fashion very easily. And in many cases, surprisingly fast. Most of the, the times that the latency between the, the local replicas are sub second and maybe the site level, we, we can be sub second or maybe a few seconds behind, depending on the, obviously the replication link, how fast the replication links we have and what type of a trans transaction load is, what size of the transaction and the number of transactions. But here we go. We are back in business and starting point. We can close all of these success notification and we are done with the demo. I hope you enjoy. It's pretty remarkably simple and easy <clears throat> to do really complex high availability and disaster recovery operations with tungsten clustering. Obviously, we have the, the scalability devices that having a geographic distribution of the read load, or in some cases also the update load if you want you to have an active active type of clusters. The cost continuum pricing is non-linear. We are aligning ourselves nicely with the, the overall open source marketplace pricing strategies. And our solution includes amazing 24 seven support. Uh, our response time is less than three minutes. Pretty remarkable, don't you think? And all of the support is provided by people having a DBA or site reliability engineering background for over 20 years. So when you approach us, not only you get somebody immediately available, but they are highly qualified MySQL database engineers, being able to not only help with the tungsten solution, but they have a really good general understanding of the, the MySQL itself as a whole. So, all in all, where does continuum fit in? So we've been on the forefront of the, the open source and cloud computing. 2004 refers to the date when we arrived US. We started out of Finland and then we moved the operation to be a US based company. We have all along thought about focusing on platform agnostic, being able to run on, on premises, virtual machines, cloud environments providing a highly available, globally scaling cluster database for business critical MySQL needs. So it's pretty clear mission that we have been past 20 years. We are not necessarily the biggest company on this field. Uh, and that's not really the aim. But we aim to be the best at what we choose to do. And we have chosen to do is MySQL availability, MySQL disaster recovery, MySQL continuous operation. And that we do by far the best. And we have a number of uh, loyal customers staying behind, effectively support billions of dollars combined revenue across our existing customers. You see these blue chip customers relying, some of them may have a local deployments, most of them have a uh, geographically distributed deployment and some have a widely geographically distributed the deployments up to five clusters in five different regions of the uh, globe. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and the demo. This was the number two webinar in our high availability done right and disaster recovery done right series so you may want to take a look at the earlier recording on the availability. And then I hope that you will join us on the follow-up recording about the, the disaster recovery when we are using active active sites, which is even easier in many ways than the active passive. But the, I think that was kind of a pretty remarkable and easy enough already as it is. Thank you. Bye now.